today we're going to be talking about how to use the six overblow in the blues. Here we go. Little demo. said earlier we're gonna be talking about the six overblow uh, one of you guys have requested a video on how to use overblows in blues music the subject of using all of the overblows in blues would just be like a two-hour video at least so we're just gonna take them one overblow at a time we'll start today with the six overblow the reason that I'm starting with the six overblow is because it's a very, very important overblow to learn. If you're looking to get interested in overblowing, this is one of the main reasons why you would consider starting to learn that technique. The six overblow is the same note as the three draw half step bend. If you want to play that in the second octave, you need the six overblow on that starting note. If you're learning your blue scale or your minor pentatonic scale, you're already probably looking for that note in the second octave. I got lots of videos on the minor pentatonic scale, but let's take a look at it one more time. So it's just, that's the note right there. It's the second note. It's a flat third, but in a minor blues, we call it a minor third because it's the note that defines the chord as being minor. So in order to play that same scale in the second octave, I need that minor third, that six overblow. Aside from just scales and stuff, it's a great way to just start playing a little bit bluesier in that second octave, to give yourself one of the key blue notes in holes, you know, four through six, right? If you don't know how to overblow, please visit one of my earlier videos on how to overblow. There's also a lot of other people's videos out there. If my particular language doesn't speak to you and doesn't get you overblowing, you know, right away or within a few days or so, definitely check out some other people's because sometimes the language that I use might not be the perfect language that communicates to you somebody else might say it a different way that just speaks to you. So definitely utilize all the resources on YouTube for this technique. It does help to have a harmonica where the action on the reed is set a little closer. So let's talk about the note. Okay, so first of all, again, on the, on the one chord over a major blues, we'd call it a flat third. On the one chord over a minor blues, it would be called a minor third. On a C harmonica, it's a marine band from Blue Moon. And I'm playing in the key of G or in G minor, right? <clears throat> Either way, I'm using the same scale so that I can play a minor scale over a major blues, or I can play 
a minor scale, of course, over a minor blues. In this case, I'm in second position in G on a C R. The first thing to do is to just start trying to hit the note as awkwardly or as well as you possibly can. You got your six blow, and then you want to get your six over blow. Jumping right in. The first thing to do to start getting this note into your playing is take a lick that you know or a partial scale from the bottom end of the harmonica and try to move that into the middle register. So let's take a look at like a lick off the top of my head from the bottom. So like, so I went from the root G, two draw, two draw, flat third, two draw. So two draw, three draw, half step, bend, two draw. Now I'm gonna try to move that same lick to the next octave. So I know that six blow is the same as two draw. So I'm gonna start there, then I'm gonna try to hit the overblow and then go back to the six blow. Now you might've noticed that I sometimes bend the overblow a little bit. We'll talk more about that later. So that's a simple lick. So it's just from two draw to three draw, half step bend back. Same lick as the uh, Willie Dixon song that Howlin' Wolf made famous, Spoonful. Then you can just start getting a little bit more complicated. For example, let me try walking up the minor pentatonic scale from the five or the one draw, the one draw, two draw double bend, two draw, three draw half step bend. Now I'm gonna move that to the second octave. I could then just try going back down. <laughs> so I'm just taking licks from the bottom and then moving them to the second register. That's super, super important. That's like a big part of how I learned how to get these things into my playing. I didn't need like a lot of music theory or anything. I just understood that the note itself was useful in the first octave. I identified what note that was in the second octave, six over blow. And then I started just moving what I already knew from the bottom to the second octave. The other way to do it is to just start putting it in your scale. So you learn your scale from the first octave up. Minor pentatonic. And then just move that to the second octave. Once I can do that, not only am I identifying where the minor third or the flat third, the three draw bend is, the six over blow, but I'm also getting a really good reminder of where all of the other notes are and where all of their octaves are. So like take a lick like. I'm learning.
learning where how to say the same thing in one octave and then in the next octave and the next octave by familiarizing myself with this particular scale. You can do this work in any scale and you know the next step is you know the blues scale where you would be needing the seven over draw as well as the six overblow. So then you would just add the overblow or the three draw bend to the lick that you already know how to do on the bottom. Take like that lick that I was just doing and just put in an overblow. That's just really addressing one chord and in one position. So let's talk a little bit about how the note works on other chords. The flat third or the three draw half step bend or the six over blow is a very useful note on the one chord, which we've already talked about, but it's also a great note to use on the four chord. On the four chord, that note becomes what we call the flat seven of four. If I'm in the key of C, or if I'm on the chord of C, on a C harp in second position, that note there is the same as a two draw double bend on the one. I can also make great use of this note on the four chord. So the title of the lesson is using the overblow in the blues. So here we go. When the band moves to the four chord, this is a great note to play instead of four blow, seven blow, or 10 blow. What you're getting is a dominant seven of that chord. Most of the time when we're playing in blues, we are, and in a lot of jazz too, in funk, we're dealing with dominant seventh chords or flat seventh chords. So when the band moves to that chord and you play this note instead of the root, you're playing a very hip and appropriate harmony to what those guys are doing. In other words, it sounds cool. So let's take a look at like how to do that. So I'm gonna go to YouTube and I'm just gonna type in blues shuffle in G. I'm pulling up my man Quist. Wow, listen to that. New Orleans is raining. Let's just check out a little guitar music for a second before the jam tracks begin. There's that four chord. That's where you're gonna use your six overblow. One, you can use it there too. Five, four, Quistorama.com, baby. Here we go. Four. One more. some blues in G using the six overblow on the four chord as a harmony of C. So that note's a B flat, but you don't have to know that. All you have to know 
is that the six overblow, when the band changes for the first time, is just like the three draw half step bend, is one of the most important notes that you can use. Once you identify what this note is, you can figure out how to use this note, not only in this position over this chord, but over other chords too, and other positions. So for example, the six overblow in second position is the flat third, the minor third, the B flat. But in another position over another key, the six overblow will take on a different role. All I'm talking about is identifying what the three draw half step bend does in whatever position you are in, in whatever key you are in, and then figuring out how to do the same thing that you already know how to do in the first octave in the second octave. actually improvise on the bottom and then just move that to the top and I'm not even thinking about what I'm gonna do because I know where that note is and I know I know it's an overblow and I know how to hit it because I practice so much of like what I'm talking to you guys about today that just getting it in the second octave it isn't really that hard so I just kind of have to move whatever I'm doing from the bottom I can just move it, right? Like, I don't even have to think about it. And that's just from, a lot of that's from just running scales. You just get good at running your scales and you get good at call and response from the first octave. to sort of change the pitch of an overblow, bend it up, bend it down, you're gonna find that in blues music, it works really, really well. So if I can push that note up a little. <laughs> so once you get the overblow, once you can do that, the bending process is the same as a blow bend. So if you can blow bend and you can overblow, you can begin to learn how to overblow bend, how to bend your overblows. Now it's a little harder. You don't have as much freedom as you do on a blow bend. So you really got to know where that edge is, where the note's going to crack out. You got to make sure that you just get it right in there. <laughs> you can really get a lot of nice, like, B.B. King kind of guitar tones out of it. So you can see like what I'm doing there is kind of creating a little bit of tension between major and minor. So I'm out of the minor pentatonic scale. I'm really not in any scale at all. I'm just kind of observing chords. So the first time I go up, I hit the seven draw, which is the major third. Down on the bottom, that would be one draw, two blow, two draw, three draw. And I'm going to do the same thing in the second octave. But then on the four chord, I'm going to utilize that flat seven thing. So you can see how it sounds like I'm playing the four.
just kind of using the six overblow as a substitute for the root of four. So instead of playing four blow in second position or seven blow or any other note, I'm choosing that note as a contrast to the major third. It's only a half step away and it creates that beautiful dominant seven flavor that causes just the right amount of tension. <laughs> So on the second octave. Very, very, very nice. So again, this is not just something for the minor pentatonic scale. Scales are just a great way to learn your way around the harmonica using a small grouping of notes to play over a wide variety of chord changes. But you can also just take the note and look at it as how it relates to each particular chord. So rather than like a scale based approach to improvising, you're really just sort of identifying key notes in the, in the chord and then learning how to arpeggiate them. And this one is a big part of playing over the four chord. Now on the five chord, this note, you can use it, but it, it doesn't have any real, uh, it's, it, it would be a raised fifth uh, on, the, uh, on the five chord. So it, it's, it's not really like the, the best choice of notes, but it certainly doesn't hurt. You can play any note in the blues scale over any chord or any note in the minor pentatonic scale over any chord. But its real uses are on the one chord, especially in a minor blues. I mean, more than especially, you need it in a minor blues up there and on the four chord as a flat seven. I hope this video has helped you to get a small understanding of how to begin using the six overblow over some basic blues changes or some funk changes or even some jazz changes, country, whatever. Leave me a comment in the comment section letting me know what you would like me to do next. I think probably next week we could do the four overblow or the five overblow, see how that works out. Same, same lesson, just with a different overblow. Talk about what the uses are for that. Be sure to check me out on Patreon. Patreon motivates me, not gonna lie, to make sure that I get a video out every single Friday, a free video, whether it's a product review or a lesson. The last, like, I don't know, five or six weeks have been nothing but harmonica lessons. Might get some product reviews out there. Might go live one of these Fridays and talk to you guys. You guys let me know what you want me to do and I'll do it. You can go to Patreon, donate a dollar a month, whatever you want, whatever's within your budget, and I'll keep the lessons coming every Friday no matter what. Check out my website, www.mooncat.org. There's obviously no tour dates during COVID. I got CDs for sale and other stuff. There's my bio and information if you want to find out about more about me and what I've done. Hey, I'm up for a 2020 Blues Music Award. So go to blues.org and vote for Jason Ritchie, the Mooncat. I appreciate you. I'd like to thank my sponsors, Lone Wolf Blues Company, Harp Gear Amplifiers, Blue Moon Harmonicas, and I got a special announcement coming up. I'm making a deal with somebody. All right. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.